out invoices, and even provide great-looking business cards. Personal Service Center. That's the one on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street, right? Just look for the yellow signs. Your pedigree palace will be a reality in no time. Whether you're building it up or knocking it down, get it done, rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals is here to make your job a little easier. Our knowledgeable staff will help you find the right equipment for any job, big or small. Did you know that Sunbelt Rentals carries heaters, air conditioners, generators, lighting, traffic control, and so much more? So whether you're building it up or knocking it down, we've got the equipment you need. Get it done, rent it now. And right now, for a limited time, you can have it for less. Just by mentioning this ad, if you rent it Friday afternoon, you can keep it the whole weekend and only pay for one day. But this is a limited time offer, so stop into Sunbelt Rentals today, Northwest 27th, just a quarter mile east of I-75. For more information, just give us a call, 352-369-9101. 352-369-9101. Sunbelt Rentals. Get it done, rent it now. 352-369-9101. Five minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking Thursday morning. Galen Unell is on the phone. And I was just looking at this story. Uh, Let me talk to Galen first. Good morning, Galen. How you doing? Hey, good morning, Larry Robin. How are y'all? Pretty good. Where are you right now? Uh, On my way to Gainesville. Nice day, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. Beautiful. A little cold. No, it's cold. It's no, not beautiful. It's cold. What was the thing we had yesterday? We had a, a story. Uh, Fifty-nine I, degrees. It's cold. <laughs> the story was: What temperature do you uh, consider sweater weather? And uh, yeah, here in Florida, the average answer was sixty. Up in uh, like Wisconsin, the average answer was like forty or something like that. Remember we had seventy-two. That s- story seventy-two. You put a sweater on. Yeah, yeah. It was cold. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. It's like fifty-three. When you go to a hotel, do you keep the room colder than you do your home, your own home? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I wonder why we do that. Yeah. We all do that, I think, mm-hmm. right? You sleep better than the when, it, when it's cold. Yeah. Do you have curtains in your home that can block out the light as well as a, a hotel curtain? Those hotel curtains, it's like it could be it can be twelve o'clock noon, and it feels like nighttime if those curtains are closed. Yeah, the, you know the problem is is there's a crack, and you have to put some time in to get rid of that sliver of light that'll come bursting through. In your home, um, I mean. No, no, in the hotel. Oh, really? So, depending on how they're designed, you gotta, you know, and it depends on which way the you're facing and all of that. What time of the year it is? It's to when the sun comes up and, uh. and how high you're up and all that. But yeah, you gotta put some time in there. In the you gotta prepare that. But anyway, I do have a, 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 a kind of a cool, <laughs> a, cool, a cool topic for you. But I was okay. All right. So I was looking at a story. I'm, I think I'm confused about a story here. I had a story that said the District of Columbia voted to to not become the next state, the 51st state. But now I'm looking at one that says voters in the District of Columbia passed a measure Tuesday in favor of petitioning Congress to become a state in the union. So now it says... Yeah, that, that's right. They, it did pass. Yeah, it did now pass. Passed. Well, it didn't pass. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. They voted for it. Their electorate voted. They, they've been trying to get statehood for 100 years, I think. So they have no chance. There's no chance. Why don't happen. they have a chance? And and I don't under. I thought there was a reason for it to not be a state. Well, there was. It was a part of when they were finally, you know, when they were putting together the government. They didn't want the federal government to have any state uh, bias, and so that's why they carved out a federal land. The reason it won't pass is because, first of all, it's Washington D.C., which is extremely liberal extremely Democrat, um, and that would give them two house seats in the Senate, which means the Democrats would own the Senate for the next hundred years. Um, and you need two-thirds majority vote uh, to, to pass, and so that will, unless the, the, the Democrats somehow manage to get two-thirds of the Senate and the, and the House, it's just not going to happen. So they would get one House of Representatives and two senators, and that's just not going to happen. Just not. By the by the way, the, did you know why it's called the District of Columbia? No, I did it one time. I forgot. Col- Columbia is what some of the founding fathers called the country. They oh, call, they called this Columbia because Columbia was um, it meant the seeing eye. Not it had nothing to do with Columbus. It had to do with the hmm. seeing eye and, and the. There you go. The, the all-seeing eye or something like oh. that. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah which okay. is why it's on that on the dollar bill, the all yeah. CI, whatever. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I didn't right. know that. Isn't that interesting? No, no. The Absolutely. Illuminati is everywhere, Larry. It's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, we were, we were talking about the importance of teams and uh, and the two heads are better than one thinking on things. Um, so that's where our topic is today. So let me. So can I can I start from the beginning? Sure. <laughs> I'll try to make it short. I was watching this video last night on Willie Nelson's first, not his first guitar, but his favorite guitar. Mm-hmm. And uh, it goes back a long way. And when he first got it, he loved it because it just had such a good sound. And I was listening to it as he played it in this video, which was like a recent video. And it sounded like an old guitar. And I thought to myself, well, that's what you look for when you buy a new guitar, something that sounds old. And then the video, and you know how you go down a rabbit hole with videos? So then it went to the next video where a guy was playing saxophone by, him, by himself and another one. So it went to all these solo musicians, okay? And, and I thought, you know, they're all really good, but they're, you can't compare a solo musician to a band. A band is always going to sound better than, a, than one person by himself. You could argue this, I guess. But the same thing would be in, in athletics, right? You would have... A football player who's very talented at what he does, but if he's not on the team, he can't do as as much as he can, right? Right. Exactly. Does this all make sense? Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> all right. So that jumps to the next topic, which was Trump's cabinet. <laughs> because uh-huh. no matter who, who, what you think of Trump, if he doesn't have a good cabinet, if he doesn't have a good team, it's going to be hard for him to do anything. Yeah. He's right? A good team. So have you seen the list of people who are being considered for his cabinet? Yeah, I have. I okay. have. So I don't, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to have to Google these names as we talk about them, but I have, some of them I know, some of them I don't know. So we'll go through the list, and, and when you get your thoughts, good, bad, indifferent? Yep. Okay? All right. All right. Be- before we do that, how's the blood supply? Um, you know, right now we're doing okay. We have just over a seven-day blood supply, and uh, we, we just have to keep keep building that up for the, uh, you know, for, for the upcoming holidays that's, that are coming and Thanksgiving's just a few weeks away and we have to get ready for that. So just get out there, get the gift of life and donate blood. Can you believe, what is it, two weeks from today, right? Yeah. Hard to believe. Yep. Uh, yeah, Penn Flory and Palm Garden are the two sponsors that we thank for uh, making that important message daily right here on WOCA by Galen Unol because without that reminder then we might forget and uh, then somebody might be lying in a hospital and they might be told by a doctor, I'm sorry, yeah. we don't have any blood. How sad. C- can you imagine that? It's horrible. Not good. Horrible. Yeah. It's, Not beca- good. it's because of what Galen Unol does and his colleagues mm-hmm. that, that that very, I don't know if it ever happens. I'm going to say it never happens. Mm-hmm. But this probably been a few times where somebody was told, I'm sorry, we have to wait. We don't have blood right now. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that well, they've had to wait definitely because of the blood type, because of uh, the proper matching. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's why it's such an important message. And forget all the politics, forget all the differences we may have. This is the one thing we can all agree on. That and the fact that Cool Whip has no flavor, <laughs> 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 but we get it anyway. Okay. That's right. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Pa- Palm Garden of Ocala Health and Rehabilitation Center, thank you for what you do. First of all, you help people uh, get back on their feet, literally, uh, and uh, be able to uh, function as a normal person after having a Parkinson's disease and after mm-hmm. having all kinds of circumstances that therapy can help you with. It's, it's really amazing to see people uh, before and after videos. We were watching some on one of their events they had. Go to Palm Garden and see for yourself what they can do for you or, in love, or a loved one. Pen flooring, and they can help you remodel your home or your office from the floor up. They've got beautiful flooring. Check it out at 1201 Southwest 17th Street. And uh, we're not up to the break yet, so just thank them. Okay. We'll go to the break when we get there. Here okay. are the names. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. For the, for the cabinet. Let's see. Sure. Um, the first one is Attorney General. Mm-hmm. The names on oh, the that's l- going to be Rudy Giuliani. The name, I think that's all. I think that's all that's done. He, he, do you know all the names already? Uh, well, I, you know, I watched Rudy Giuliani last night on uh, Fox, and uh, he kind of smiled when Bill O'Reilly asked if he's going to be the next Attorney General. Oh, really? Okay. Well, 
you know, I haven't been offered the position. But I, I think it's I think it's going to be Rudy. Well, I mean, Rudy Giuliani is stuffed by that guy. <clears throat> the four names so. the four names that were on the list uh, were Governor Chris Christie, Attorney General Pam Bondi from Florida, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Senator Senator Jeff Sessions, and former Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Oh, so he's yeah. got four to choose from. Well, there's four on the yeah, list. And, uh, he, he might have more. No, than four. he could he, he could choose whoever he wants, basically. So yeah, I I. I, I yeah, I'm curious as to what he does with uh, Jeff Sessions and Rudy will both be in his cabinet. It'll just be interesting to see which which position they end up in. Huh. So, uh, Secretary of Commerce. The list mm-hmm. is Chris Christie, uh, s- former Nucor CEO Dan Demicio or Demico, sorry, uh, mm-hmm. businessman Lou Eisenberg, former Governor Mike Huckabee. Senator David Perdue or former Senator Jim Talent? You know, I don't think it'll be Perdue, and I don't think it'll be Huckabee. Uh, this is one that it doesn't get a lot of publicity, but this is the person who's going to help him with a lot of the trade agreements, yeah. so called, you know, that he wants to pull back. This would you be. know, he wants to pull back NAFTA uh, and, and renegotiate that, and, and that would have to be that person. So. It could become of more prominence in, in his um, presidency. So we'll wow. see. A businessman makes sense to me on that one. All right, we'll take yeah. a little break. We'll be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Thursday, lots of sunshine. The high 77 to 81. Clear to partly cloudy Thursday night with lows ranging from the upper 40s and low 50s in a few inland spots to the upper 50s along the coast. For Veterans Day, mostly sunny and pleasant. The high 77 to 81. Saturday, partly sunny. High 78 to 82. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, my name is Erica Olstein. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine. So, you used to be wired. Now you're just tired. You used to be thin, but now you're the heaviest you've ever been. You don't necessarily always have to take a med if your thyroid is playing dead. If you have a thyroid disorder, an acupuncture visit may be in order. Come visit me, your primary care physician, Erica Olstein, at A Better You Healthcare. Call me at 352-615-5566. This is Jan Marino from Palm Garden of Ocala. At Thanksgiving, more than ever, our thoughts turn gratefully to those who have made our progress possible. And in this spirit, we say, from Jennifer McCullough, the Executive Director, and the rest of our staff, simply but sincerely, thank you, and best wishes for a happy Thanksgiving. Ocala veterans have the opportunity to receive free dental services at Smiles at Heathbrook on Friday, November 11th. Dr. Christopher Bonesteel and the team at Oak Ridge Dental Care will be honoring veterans as part of Veterans Free Dentistry Day with free dental care to veterans without dental insurance. One free extraction or cleaning will be provided per patient between 8 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. You must make an appointment. There are no walk-ins and space is limited. For more information, to make an appointment, call 433-2320. That's 433-2320. If you are hearing this message and wish to lose 50 pounds permanently, then write this phone number down, 352-633-0473. Dr. Juan Jordan's office in Lady Lake is offering the first 15 callers a free metabolism and body fat analysis with a comprehensive, in-depth fat-burning consultation. You have nothing to lose. Please call 352-633-0473. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. All right, 18 minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Galen Newnold from Life South Community Blood Center is on the phone. And to remember the important reason Galen comes on with us each weekday morning, it's uh, not to have fun with us, not to uh, put on his thinking cap regarding the next cabinet of the president, uh, but to uh, remind us all to donate blood. We just pick his brain because he's a smart guy. 
He was ta- see, talented was very, in radio, and mm-hmm, uh, it's always very. fun. All right, so the, we are talking about the uh, Trump cabinet potential nominees. Uh, so in the agriculture secretary, hmm, let's see. You still there, Galen? Yeah, yeah, it'll probably be that guy from Texas uh, said something. To get the guy who uh, screamed at Hillary. <laughs> so, um, what was it? What's his name? Ah, Roman Berman. I don't know, something like that. Oh, Bra- is it Brown? What do they say? Governor Sam Brownback is one of them. National Council okay. of Farmer Cooperatives CEO Chuck Connor. That, okay. Just, just the title sounds like a good choice around yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, Governor Dave Heineman. Heineman. Texas Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller. Maybe that's who you mean. That's him, Sid Miller, yeah. And former Georgia Governor Sonny Perdue. Yeah, again, uh, I don't think it'll be Perdue. Perdue did not have the greatest run in in, uh, Georgia. But again, all of those guys are from agricultural states and and have a real grip on, on where we're at in the agriculture. And that's kind of a lesser not as important. We so. act, we actually have a uh, a connection to uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, uh, it's a lady who used to live here in Ocala. I, don't, mm-hmm. I probably would be stupid to say her name, but but yeah. she doesn't live here anymore. She lives no. in Palm Beach now. Yes. But anyway, so she posted on her f- uh, Facebook page. Ben Carson was down in Palm Beach. What, yesterday, maybe? Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. yesterday. And he was thanking all of them for helping. So Ben Carson is on the list for the Secretary of Education. Mm-hmm. Secretary of Education. Uh, I've also heard him mention for the, um, uh, what is it, the, oh, I forgot the name of it. Health and Human HS, Services. Not HS, Health and Human, yeah, yeah. HSS. Yeah. HHA. And, and I think that's the one where he's probably going to end that's up. That's what I think, too. Um, yeah. yeah. But, you know, the, the education piece is, a, is extremely important to, to Ben Carson, and he'd be a good fit for that. I, that's the one department that, well, there's two that I would just instantly eliminate. The Department of Education would be one, and then the Energy Department would be the second one. Uh, when your whole focus is to build nuclear warheads and we can no longer make nuclear bombs, there's no point in it. So... Hmm. But I don't think I, I understand your feelings about the Department of Education, but I don't think they're going to get rid of it. No, oh, they're not. It's, they're, they're, no, I don't. I don't think you do. I think the education should be in the hands of the states. I do. Uh, I agree with that. But, but but the problem with the Department of Education is what they do in order to push their ways. With you know, we could talk about Common Core. We could talk about all of these uh, standardized testing. That's all pushed from the federal government in the form. It, it's blackmail just like they do with the Department of Transportation. Um, it's blackmail, and they and they use that against the states, and I, I think it's blackmail, and, and I think the states should decide what their curriculum is. The states have a better idea of what their, their jobs, you know, what kind of training you need in order to get your jobs and into your uh, university system, and I, I don't think the federal government should have a role in, in educating my child. A guy who says he doesn't know much about music just harmonized with us pretty well, didn't he? I thought so. That was a perfect harmony, Galen. I thought so. Perfect. perfect, <laughs> it, perfect I mean, it's perfect, perfect. perfect harmony to what we've said f- about that particular subject. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely agree 100% with what you just said. But I, but uh, nevertheless, I don't think they're going to do away with it. Um, but, but No, he can't. It would take, uh, that, would, that would really be draining the swamp. But, <laughs> but <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, it would. But if you are not going to get rid of it, then you should put somebody in there who at least sees it the way you just said it. And I think Ben Carson sees it the way you just said it. I believe he does. And, and, I, and I'd be okay with that decision. I really would. What they typically do is they put somebody in there, and this is what he better not do, or we're, we're going to have a long four years. They usually put somebody there who's a previous president of a college or you know of a university um and is some type of a professor well uh, who looks at everything as a rudimentary over and over again and and, and i think we need a complete different look at it well ben carson is not the only name the other name is hoover institution fellow william ever so he might fit the bill you just described that's what i'm talking about i can't uh, all right all that does it's an ancestral thought process they grew up in the university system. They believe in the university system, and they want to keep maintaining that exact same system. Okay, there you go. Well, that's why Ben Carson might be a better choice. Yes, that might that might be okay. Uh, Secretary of Energy, 
venture capitalist Robert Grady hmm, hmm? or businessman Harold Hamm? Yeah, and I know what they're wanting to do is to really uh, change the department overall. So I have no problem with a business person running that and actually bringing it into the to the century. Uh, I'm very, very curious. I, I, I'll bet you I can't even name who the current Department of Energy Secretary is. I, I'll bet you 99% of the population can. So... The, uh, the next one is interesting because Governor Rick Scott is named for the Secretary of Health and Human Services, and as we mentioned, so is Ben Carson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Governor Rick Scott has already said he's not interested, so you can probably scratch Yeah, he's not, he's, he's not, he's not going to be, li- I think that was going to be a fallback if he didn't win the, you know, the, you know, governor, what, two years ago or whatever. But I that think. also, I don't know, that's kind of contradictory because he uh, made a lot of money with hospitals, but he had... S- Oh my gosh, he had so many bad marks against him because of that. Yeah. Well, that's the other side. If he was to win, if he was to get the uh, that position, you'd hear all renewed outrage about right. you know what HCA did and and right. he should have gone to jail. I, I think he's done an okay job as governor, but when you go back and look at it, the man should have gone to jail. So I don't I, 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 period. All right, another yeah. another a guy I like but I don't know that I like him in this position, Newt Gingrich. Also for health and human services, I just don't get that one. Yeah, and former yeah, he'll, he'll be your he'll be your secretary of state. Former New Jersey Senator uh, Rich Bagger, New Jersey State Senator rather Rich Bagger. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I, I, th- I think I, Ben I, Carson looks like the best choice on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, secretary of Homeland Security Chris Christie or Sheriff David Clark. Oh my gosh! I, I think it's going to be David Clark. Yeah, me too. Yeah, um, we please. need we need a bulldog. Please, we need a, somebody. Yes. That's well, close. you know what? If nothing else, you'll be you'll we'll be able to keep interviewing the guy with his cowboy hat. <laughs> you know, just what, what I would do is you just say, "Look, here's what I need you to do. I just need you to walk around in some of these high thread areas in your cowboy hat and your boots, <laughs> and, and I want you to and I want you to pack a side on." That's- <laughs> that that is a deterrent. I'm telling you, you're. That is you, a deterrent. I think you're right. Yes, <laughs> Billy Woods There's has a cowboy an angry hat. black man that's armed <laughs> in, in New York in Times Square. Times Square would be the safest place on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Times Square is the safest place on the planet right that's now. That's right, exactly. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. It's it's amazing how safe yeah. it is. All right, uh, Secretary of the Interior. There's a long list of names here. Uh, I, I I heard that they're going to give it to Sarah Palin. I think that's all but a done deal. Really? Yeah. Well, that's this her that's name the, on the list. Her all. name's on the list. Yeah, but this came out this morning, so they yeah. already they already knocked every name off of this list. No, no, no. no. I, I was reading that on uh, Twitter. That was trending. Is that uh, he had a conversation with Sarah Palin, and uh, I guess that's going to be you know in his first group of batch of nominees. He you know he's a big fan of Sarah well, Palin, and Sarah Palin went to bat for him early on. So okay, but I, I think I, he's just rewarding her. I'm just gonna um, step back and. See say i don't think it's a done deal no i don't think so either it's like the exit polls and everything they it might be i mean true. maybe you read something since this came out i'm trying to i don't think i printed when this was you out. gotta remember now sarah paley is very familiar with uh the inuit population of alaska which is kind of what the department of interior deals with you know there's some uh environmental issues that she's familiar with being in alaska with the mineral rights and all of those things so i think she'd actually be a good choice yeah but when she left when when she quit as governor and she was going to run as vice president she left a lot of people not liking her up there because she deserted them well she took a better job i mean that happens she's fine i I think that's the job she'll do and well just just in case you want to hear the other names i do i want to hear the the other uh, let's see. I don't know how to say the name Mnuchin. Is it right? right, right. Uh, Governor Jan Brewer, Governor Mary Fallon, uh, Grady. That's on the list. I don't know who that is. Ham, Grady and Ham. Oh, Grady and Ham. Well, it's two different people. Yeah, Grady and Ham. <laughs> <laughs> Oil executive Forrest Lucas, Representative Cynthia Loomis, and former Governor Sarah Palin. There you go. Okay, good list to choose from. Uh, but Galen said it's her. It's a done deal. 
Well. Secretary of the Interior. Okay. I, okay. Uh, I, was, I was reading a different list there. But that's those are the names on that list. Sorry. Secretary of Defense. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be General Clark. Or, I mean, General Flynn. That's General Mike. I, 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 yeah, General Mike yeah, Flynn I think is one. Be Mike Flynn. Yeah, it is. He yeah. is one of the choices. Stephen Hadley, Representative Duncan Hunter Jr., uh, Jeff Sessions, or former Senator Jim it, Talent. It, I, I think if um, General Flynn doesn't want it, then they'll give it to then then they'll give it to Jeff Sessions. And, and I've met uh, Sessions, and I think he's actually a really good guy. Uh, I've met with him a couple of times, and and I think he's a really good guy, really solid individual. So I think it'd be a good choice for that position. Uh, there's only one name under chief of staff. Yeah. Reince. Uh, how do you I say it? Reince Priebus? How do you say his name? Reince. Yeah. Reince. I, I think, well, Reince Who's has that? been a, been a, ever since, uh, ever since really Trump went into this whole thing, Reince has been there. So which has been his go-to guy. So I, I think that's going to be it. And, uh, you know, and again, you've got department, 20 the, seconds. The, the state department will be uh, Newt Gingrich and and I think that'll be it the other one for, for Ten seconds staff could be his son Donald J. Trump Jr. I don't see so, but be, his name on the list okay. his name's not, not on there but there's talk about it five seconds so. where's the blood mobile three seconds blood mobile today Larry is uh, <laughs> Chrysler you can't, I, I can't finish if you talk it uh, yeah Jeep, uh, Chrysler Jeep Phillips Chrysler Jeep <laughs> thank you Chrysler Jeep. thank you Gail. have a good day alright bye bye of Donald Trump. She's outside Trump Tower in New York City. I believe the United States has made a terrible mistake. Protesters in Texas, a state won by Trump, are planning to move forward after the election. Trump will meet with President Obama at the White House to discuss the transition of power.